If you don't like being overweight but still struggle with diet and exercise, then this video is for you. The global obesity crisis is escalating at an alarming rate. This is a serious health crisis affecting millions of people. We often hear about the importance of diet and exercise for weight management. According to Dr. Benjamin Bickman's research, insulin acts as the gatekeeper of fat storage, controlling the entry of glucose from the bloodstream into various tissues, primarily muscle and fat cells, to be used for energy. Insulin, often dubbed the fat storage hormone, plays a critical role in regulating our body's energy balance, especially when it comes to fat. While insulin is essential for helping our cells utilize glucose for energy, chronically elevated levels can tip the scales towards fat storage, contributing to weight gain and increasing the risk of metabolic disorders. Imagine insulin as a gatekeeper of our fat cells. When we consume food, especially carbohydrates, our bodies break it down into glucose, which enters the bloodstream. Lipolysis is the process by which our bodies break down stored fat into free fatty acids and glycerol, which can then be used as fuel for energy. This process is essential for maintaining energy balance, especially during periods of fasting or low carbohydrate intake. According to Dr. Benjamin Bickman's research, insulin acts as a potent inhibitor of lipolysis. When insulin levels are high, as they are after a carbohydrate-rich meal, it signals to our fat cells to halt the breakdown of stored fat. The Impact of Elevated Insulin on Fat Loss Based on research conducted by Dr. Benjamin Bickman, chronically elevated insulin levels, often driven by a diet high in refined carbohydrates and sugars, create a biochemical environment that hinders fat loss and promotes fat storage. This metabolic imbalance lies at the heart of the global obesity epidemic. When we consume a meal, especially one high in carbohydrates, our bodies release insulin to manage the influx of glucose into our bloodstream. Insulin's Dual Role – A Delicate Balance Insulin plays a fascinating dual role in the life of a fat cell, acting as both a growth stimulator and a regulator. This delicate balance is crucial for maintaining healthy body composition and metabolic function. Maintaining a delicate balance of insulin is essential for optimal health. When we consume food, especially carbohydrates, our bodies break it down into glucose, which enters the bloodstream and triggers the release of insulin from the pancreas. Hypertrophy, the expanding fat cell. As highlighted in Dr. Benjamin Bickman's research, fat cells, also known as adipocytes, possess a remarkable ability to expand and contract, reflecting the body's energy balance. This dynamic process is influenced by various factors, including insulin levels, dietary habits, and physical activity. The expanding fat cell is a significant concern in understanding weight gain and weight loss mechanisms. When we consistently consume more calories than we burn, particularly from calorie-dense processed foods high in refined carbohydrates and sugars, our bodies experience a chronic surplus of energy. Insulin resistance, a protective mechanism? Insulin resistance in fat cells might actually serve as a protective mechanism, a desperate attempt by our bodies to prevent more severe metabolic dysfunction in the face of chronic energy surplus. This intriguing perspective challenges the conventional view of insulin resistance as solely a pathological process. As fat cells expand and become engorged with triglycerides, they start to resist insulin signals to take up more glucose. Hyperplasia versus Hypertrophy – Two Paths to Fat Storage According to the findings of Dr. Benjamin Bickman, our bodies have two primary mechanisms for fat storage, hyperplasia and hypertrophy. These processes, while both contributing to an increase in body fat, have distinct characteristics and implications for metabolic health. Understanding the difference between these two mechanisms can provide valuable insights into the complexities of weight gain and the challenges of losing weight. Ethnic Variations in Fat Storage A Global Perspective In this section, we delve into how different ethnic groups around the world experience and manage fat storage in their bodies. This is a crucial aspect of understanding global health trends and the unique challenges faced by various populations. The global obesity epidemic affects people of all ethnicities, transcending borders and cultures. It is a pervasive issue that has significant implications for public health worldwide. But the way our bodies store fat is not uniform across different ethnic groups. Each group has unique patterns of fat distribution that can influence their overall health and risk for certain diseases and the health consequences of excess fat can vary significantly depending on our genetic makeup and ancestral heritage. This means that two individuals with the same body mass index BMI, might have different health outcomes based on their ethnic background. 
As evidenced by Dr. Benjamin Bickman's work, insulin plays a pivotal role in how our bodies store fat. These ethnic variations in fat storage highlight the complex interplay between genetics, environment, and lifestyle factors in shaping our metabolic health. For example, diet and physical activity levels can interact with genetic predispositions to influence how and where fat is stored in the body. Community health initiatives that promote healthy eating and regular exercise are essential in managing these risks, especially in ethnically diverse populations. For instance, individuals of Asian descent, who make up a significant portion of the global population, particularly those of East Asian origin, have unique health profiles that require special attention tend to have a lower body mass index threshold for developing metabolic complications compared to their Caucasian counterparts. This means that even at lower levels of body fat, they are at a higher risk for conditions like diabetes and heart disease. This means that Asians can develop health problems like type 2 diabetes which is a growing concern in many Asian countries due to changing lifestyles and dietary habits, and heart disease at lower levels of body fat than Caucasians. This increased risk necessitates targeted public health strategies to address these specific vulnerabilities. This increased susceptibility to metabolic disease in Asians is partly attributed to their genetic predisposition to store fat viscerally, which is more dangerous than subcutaneous fat, meaning around their internal organs, such as the liver and pancreas. This type of fat storage is associated with a higher risk of metabolic diseases, rather than subcutaneously, just beneath the skin. Subcutaneous fat, while still a health concern, is less harmful than visceral fat. Understanding these differences is crucial for developing effective health interventions tailored to specific ethnic groups. By recognizing and addressing these ethnic variations in fat storage and metabolic health, we can create more inclusive and effective public health strategies. This global perspective is essential for tackling the obesity epidemic and improving health outcomes for all. Ultimately, a comprehensive approach that considers genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors will be key to managing and preventing obesity and its related health issues on a global scale. By working together, we can build healthier communities and a healthier world. The Insulin Factor – Fueling Visceral Fat Accumulation Dr. Benjamin Bickman's research indicates that insulin plays a significant role in visceral fat accumulation. Insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas, helps regulate blood sugar levels. However, elevated insulin levels can promote the storage of fat, particularly around the organs. This process is especially pronounced in the liver, contributing to visceral fat accumulation. The Fructose-Insulin Connection In this section we will delve into the intricate relationship between fructose and insulin, and how this connection impacts our overall health. Insights from Dr. Benjamin Bickman's studies suggest, that fructose, unlike other sugars like glucose, doesn't directly stimulate insulin release from the pancreas. This is a crucial distinction because insulin is the hormone responsible for regulating blood sugar levels. When we consume glucose, it triggers the pancreas to release insulin which helps cells absorb glucose for energy, however fructose bypasses this mechanism. When we consume fructose, it's primarily processed by the liver. The liver is a vital organ that plays a key role in metabolizing various substances, including sugars. Unlike glucose, which is distributed throughout the body, fructose is almost exclusively metabolized in the liver. The liver can only handle so much fructose at once. When we consume high amounts of fructose, especially from processed foods and sugary drinks, the liver becomes overwhelmed. This overload can lead to several metabolic issues. When overloaded, the liver converts excess fructose into triglycerides, a type of fat that circulates in the bloodstream and contributes to visceral fat accumulation. Triglycerides are stored in fat cells, and high levels in the blood are associated with an increased risk of heart disease. This buildup of visceral fat is a major driver of insulin resistance. Visceral fat, which accumulates around internal organs, is particularly harmful because it releases inflammatory substances that interfere with insulin's ability to regulate blood sugar. This might seem like a good thing at first glance but in reality, it sets off a chain of events that can ultimately lead to higher insulin levels and increased fat storage, particularly in the abdominal area. Over time this can contribute to the development of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and other metabolic disorders. Understanding the fructose-insulin connection, as highlighted by Dr. Benjamin Bickman, is essential for making informed dietary choices and maintaining metabolic health. Elevated insulin levels. The hidden danger. Not all fat is created equal. 
While we often focus on subcutaneous fat, the fat stored just beneath the skin, it's the visceral fat, the fat that accumulates around our internal organs, that poses the most significant health risks. Hidden deep within the abdominal cavity, visceral fat is metabolically active, acting like an endocrine organ, secreting hormones and inflammatory compounds that can wreak havoc on our metabolic health. According to Dr. Benjamin Bickman's research, elevated insulin levels are a hidden danger. Fructose's Impact Beyond Fat Storage According to Dr. Benjamin Bickman's research, fructose's contribution to fat storage and insulin resistance is a significant concern, but its health implications extend far beyond weight gain and metabolic dysfunction. Emerging research suggests that excessive fructose consumption might play a role in a wide range of health problems, from heart disease and fatty liver disease to gout and even certain types of cancer. One of the most well-established consequences of excessive fructose consumption is its detrimental impact on liver health. Dr. Benjamin Bickman's research findings indicate that insulin sensitivity, frequently regarded as a key indicator of metabolic health, can be a bit of a double-edged sword, especially when it comes to weight management. On one hand, it allows your body to efficiently use insulin to manage blood sugar levels, while being insulin sensitive means your body responds efficiently to insulin, allowing for better blood sugar control, it can also make you more susceptible to storing excess calories as fat, particularly if your diet is high in carbohydrates. This means that even though your body is good at managing blood sugar, it can also be very efficient at storing fat if you consume more calories than you burn. Think of insulin sensitivity as a finely tuned engine. When you step on the gas pedal or consume carbohydrates, the engine, which is your metabolism, responds quickly and powerfully, burning the fuel, glucose, efficiently. However, just like a car engine, if you keep adding more fuel than the engine can burn, it will eventually lead to an overflow. In the human body, this overflow is stored as fat. Therefore, maintaining a balanced diet and regular physical activity is crucial. Regular exercise helps to increase insulin sensitivity and allows your body to use glucose more effectively, while a balanced diet ensures that you are not consuming excess calories that could be stored as fat. Monitoring your diet and staying active can help you harness the benefits of insulin sensitivity without falling into the trap of weight gain. It's all about finding the right balance to keep your metabolic engine running smoothly. Managing overall insulin levels through diet and lifestyle choices is crucial for metabolic health and paying attention to insulin timing, meaning when insulin levels rise and fall throughout the day, can further optimize our metabolic flexibility and support weight management. Our bodies are naturally more insulin sensitive in the morning and early afternoon, primed to efficiently utilize carbohydrates for energy after the overnight fast. This natural insulin sensitivity gradually declines as the day progresses, reaching its lowest point in the evening. Managing insulin levels isn't just about weight loss, it's a cornerstone of optimal health and longevity. By keeping insulin levels in check, we can improve blood sugar control, reduce inflammation, boost energy levels, enhance cognitive function, and lower the risk of developing chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and even certain types of cancer. The good news is that we have a powerful tool at our disposal to manage insulin levels, our lifestyle. In conclusion, understanding insulin's profound influence on fat storage and overall health empowers us to make informed choices that can transform our well-being. Controlling insulin can be powerful for health, helping us break free from the cycle of weight gain, insulin resistance, and chronic disease.